Happy New Year! In this 2023, are you planning to get your startup idea to life? Are you a non-technical founder and not sure where to begin with your app planning process? This is A.B. Modi from Agile FX, and in this video, I will walk you through my first three steps that I take before getting started with any web or mobile app. So without further ado, let me introduce you to these three steps. The first thing I like to do is to write down a user stories. What are the user stories? User stories are simple statement that explains who you're building this feature for, what is the feature, and what is the benefit the user will have. This is often used by Agile principles and Scrum method, and this clear statement helps any developer to execute on the development of that specific feature very clearly. So it's very important that you write a clear user stories for your app. But before you get started, you need to define three things. Actually, the first thing you need to define is type of users. The second thing you have to define is a list of features that you like to build. And the third thing you like to define is what is that outcome that you would like to receive or benefit you like to have by implementing that feature. So let me walk you through what I mean by that. The first thing you can do here is to start with a types of users. So let's say we have a buyer and let's say you want to build a marketplace that you're going to have a buyer. You're going to have a seller. And these are the different types of users I'm defining. And let's say you're going to have an admin who's going to manage the app. Now, the way you write a user story, it's pretty simple statements that you write. Um, so first thing you begin with as a and this is where you're going to define a user i like to and this is how it's basically a standard structure of writing a user story and this is where you're going to describe a feature so that and you're describing a benefit right so as a user, I like to do this so that I can get this. So let's just start with a first user, uh, which in this case is a buyer. And then the first thing any app requires for a buyer to buy a product is to go through a checkout process, right? So you can say as a buyer, I like to check out a product so that Well, why do you want to check out the product? So that you can place an order, so that I can place an order. Now, it may sound very simple, but the purpose for this is to make it simple and make it very clear for a developer or whoever is going to build the app, a precise uh, task. Uh, you can call this as a task. So this could be the one task that you can assign to a developer to yourself if you're building this app. Now you can be very clear saying that, okay, as a buyer, and so now you know you're building this for a buyer, you want to build a checkout product page where you can place an order. So like this, you're writing down all the list of user stories. Um, the other example I would put in is that as a buyer, I like to log in or sign up to the app so that I can access my account right so things like that is how you're going to make a list of things once you have all those defined the next thing you want to do is so, uh, is to write down list of features maybe you can begin with a list of features first but i usually like to start with the user stories that kind of gives me the list of features i want to build so from that user story you're also simultaneously building the feature list um, i would usually use a um, a simple table format. By the way, I use this um, app called Miro. Miro board is a brainstorming tool or user flowchart. You can do many, many things with the Miro board, but I use it for everything from writing user stories to creating uh, technical user flowchart, wireframes, you name it. So let me walk you through the list of features. We are not gonna need this column right here. So I'm just gonna delete that. Now, the way I like write down the features is in two different columns. One is nice to have, second is must have. Now, this is 
the hardest exercise um, a founder has to go through, or a product owner has to go through. Because as a founder, you always have this um, idea of creating a perfect app to begin with. Now, the first thing you want to do, and you probably heard about this, MVP, the minimum viable product. Uh, if, if it's your brand new idea and you're trying to validate your hypothesis, you want to keep your app as minimum as possible. And the idea for that app should be to validate your core hypothesis to see if this is a viable business, if this is a viable app that user is going to use. And for that, you have to limit the number of feature you can deploy because each feature is more time and cost to you. So the first thing I would recommend is to be extremely disciplined and be honest to yourself and to identify what are those nice to have features and what are the must have feature. For an example, I want to create um, an option for our users to log in and sign up, right? So you can have login and sign up uh, with email and password, right? So that is going to be, oops, spell it this wrong. Let me just go sign up. So that is basic, that is must have, because in order for anyone to create an account, you need to have that login, email, and password. But then you may think, oh, well, you know what? I also want to create an option for my user to log in with Facebook. Um, I want them to have an option to log in with Google, uh, log in with LinkedIn. Now, all of this individuals is possible, but again, it's gonna add more time. Each different service you wanna integrate, it's gonna be more time. Now, can this be wait? Absolutely. But if you think this is necessary and you need to have, let's say someone to sign in with Google so you can collect their Gmail email address because that's maybe your product, then maybe you can move this to the must have, right? And then keep all everything else as nice to have. The other example I can give you for must have features, and let's say you have a product catalog page, right? Um, the product catalog page is going to give you a list of all the products that your marketplace may be selling. But then in that product catalog page, you wanted to provide recommendations. You probably saw that, um, I forgot the actual term they use, but um, I believe it's, um, you might also like is what they say, right? Um, you may also like this. And these are basically the recommended products that are coming through your preference that you may selected originally. Now, oftentimes in a marketplace, this is a nice to have feature. Of course, it will increase more sales, but this is something you may not want to put in as your MVP because your MVP might be, if there is a product A that you're selling, are buyers looking to sell and list the item onto the marketplace, right? Uh, once you have that user base, then you can of course go and add that, um, you know, uh, you may also like a typo or recommended product options. So like this, you wanted to go and build your nice to have and must have table. And once you have done that, now the next thing you wanna do is to build a user journey. Now user journey doesn't have to be a technical flow chart. There are two types of flowcharts. There is a, a technical flowchart and there is a, a simple user journey. And I'll show you a simple user journey that anyone can build. Um, so you can begin with any shape, it doesn't matter. But let's just say you're starting with landing page. Someone comes to your landing page. They click on a product. Let me just go ahead and put this here. Uh, click on product. We're still talking about the marketplace. Uh, and then after they click on the product, there is our option to add to cart. And after that, you have an option for a checkout. Um, then you have a new user or you can have an existing user, so two different journeys, right? Um, and then because new user might have to go through that onboarding steps where you may collect their name, email, password to create the account, addresses and things like that. Um, so here you're just simply connecting the flow and a charts, very simple, very basic. Um, 
again, the checkout, you have two options, new user or an existing user. And then from here, you're taking a journey saying um, onboarding or sign up, whatever you call. And then here you can say order confirmation page. Um, and then once you have that order confirmation, you can complete the onboarding and then you can take them to the same step like this. So something extremely simple like this will allow you to bring clarity of how your users needs to, um, how the user is going to go through that journey through the app. And this type of information is going to be very helpful for your developer or technical founder per se. Um, to execute on your idea clearly and precisely. So I hope this helps to summarize. You start with user stories that will help you identify the list of potential features you may want to build. And from there, you're building a list of features with nice to have and must have. And from there, you're building a user journey, which is as simple as just putting a blocks and then kind of navigating through the different stages. So again, I hope this video helps. If you have any additional question, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can message me on LinkedIn or you can send an email to hello at edgeofx.com and happy to answer any questions you may have. I wish you all the best with your project and happy and prosperous new year. Thanks.